Hey everybody. So we've seen a little bit about chemical symbols and we've actually been using chemical formulas already without realizing, but we're going to learn specifically how we write chemical formulas. And actually the proper name for the plural of formulas is formulae with an AE at the end, uh, but you can call them formulas either one. So like I said, we've already been using chemical symbols because we know that every element on the periodic table has its own chemical symbol. We've got hydrogen, helium, um, sodium is Na, C for carbon, Au for gold. They've all got their own symbols. But a chemical formula is actually showing us um, specifically what that element is made of or what that molecule is made of. All right, so firstly, when we've been writing chemical symbols, they've actually been correct for some types of elements. And they're correct for these ones here, which are elements that are made of just single atoms So these are called monatomic atoms, sorry, monatomic elements, because they exist as just one atom flying on their own, and they're normally a gas at room temperature. If you actually look on the periodic table, all the monatomic elements, they're over on the right hand side in the last group, group 18, and they're called the noble gases. So all the noble gases, their chemical formula is the same as their chemical symbol. And if you go and look at the noble gases, you have helium, it's the first one, which is HE. You have neon, there's also argon, which is AR, and so on. There's another few, but the chemical symbol for those is exactly the same as their chemical formula because they just exist as one atom. And it's the same for any element that exists as a lattice. And all the elements that exist as lattices, they're metals. So there's lots and lots of metals, sorry, lots of metallic elements. I think there's over 80 on the periodic table. So for metals, just writing their chemical symbol is the same as their formula too. So if you write uh, lithium, we're just going to write Li, and that's the chemical formula for lithium. Um, other metals, we have iron, which is Fe. Magnesium is Mg and so on. So because these don't exist as a molecule, we can just write the chemical symbol and they're done. But when we get to elements that exist as molecules, we actually need to do something slightly different. So we're going to group all these elements into molecular elements. Elements that exist as molecules. So here's a couple here. Um, red atoms normally represent oxygen. And oxygen, nearly all the time, it exists as a molecule with two atoms. And that's called a diatomic molecule. So the way we actually write the chemical formula for oxygen is we still write its chemical symbol, which is O, but then we write a 2 down at the bottom right in subscript, which is just tiny script down the bottom. So the 2 tells us that in a molecule of oxygen there are two atoms. 
So that's also exactly the same for nitrogen too. Nitrogen atoms are diatomic. Sorry, nitrogen molecules are diatomic. And that means they exist as N2 molecules. So they're still an element because they're the same atom, but they're molecules. Okay, here's another one we've seen before. This is sulfur. But sulfur's most common form, if you get a chunk of it, is actually with in a molecule with six atoms. So it's not diatomic, it's hexatomic. And that means we're going to be writing, to write the chemical formula of sulfur, we're going to need to write S6 for to represent it has six atoms. So these are the chemical formulas of these elements. Okay. Well, chemical formulas are also really important when we get to compounds as well. Because for compounds, the chemical formulas are telling us what proportion of each type of element exists in that compound. So we've got our compounds, and again we'll write our chemical formulas over here. Chemical formulas. Alright, this first one is actually hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, and hydrochloric acid is made of a hydrogen atom that's bonded to a chlorine atom. So to write the chemical formula of hydrochloric acid, we can see that each molecule only has one atom of each, which makes it an easy formula to write because we have an H for hydrogen, and then we have a Cl for chlorine. So we don't need any subscript there. Okay, um, so that's a molecular compound. It also works for lattice compounds too. So this lattice compound is representing table salt, which is sodium chloride. And we can see that there's one yellow atom for every green atom. It doesn't matter which is sodium or chlorine. So to write the chemical formula of sodium chloride, we've got the same number of sodiums and chlorines, so we're just going to write Na and Cl. We never write a 1 at the bottom. If there's no number in the subscript, we're just assuming it's one atom. Okay, so you can see in a molecule, the chemical formula is telling us exactly how many atoms are in each molecule. There's one hydrogen and one chlorine. In a lattice compound, it's telling us the ratio. Because remember, lattices go on for trillions and trillions and trillions of atoms. But the chemical formula here is telling us that our ratio of sodium to chlorine is 1 to 1. For every sodium atom, there is a chlorine atom. All right. So that's for compounds. There's a few more compounds where it gets a little bit more complicated, where we need to actually use our subscript. So here's water molecules. And remember, water molecules have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So their chemical formula is H2O, as we've all seen before. So that's telling us that there's two H's in every molecule. Two hydrogen atoms per molecule. And then molecules can be more complicated again. So this is actually sulfuric acid. We've got one sulfur atom in the middle, four oxygen atoms, and two hydrogen atoms. So the chemical formula of sulfuric acid is H2, because there's two hydrogens, and then SO4. So there's one sulfur and four oxygens. 
the actual order that we write the elements in does matter, um, but it's too much detail to go into now. It's really just about memorizing some common chemical formulas and you get to know which order the elements tend to go in. Okay, so now we should be confident writing the chemical formulas for a whole lot of common elements and compounds.